Hello, welcome to Subjective. This is a series of interviews with contemporary fashion models to try and establish really the history of fashion photography through their eyes. Um, if you happen to be watching via Show Studios YouTube, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe below. So this is a picture I pulled. Oh, yes. Then. Well, that was quite innovative then because he had, that was a television, obviously, and yep. he, he must have had some sort of video link. Yeah. But, you know, these were early days. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know how they did it. I didn't ask. <laughs> But they obviously were, pho they, were photo they were filming my face and it was coming out on the screen, which really hadn't... Um, no, but no. again, with that... <laughs> so he was doing much more kind of... Um, although I've got some very beautiful Burt Stearns where they're very much simpler, but yeah. this, was, this was all based around this idea, yeah. this yeah. video, whatever, link. And what sort of man was he? Burt? Yeah. Oh, he was... He was very different to Dick. Dick was very kind of ethereal and yeah. gentle and softly spoken. Bert, did yeah. you ever meet Bert? No, oh, I'm sorry, I, so I loved didn't. him. He was so funny. He was kind of small and round and yeah. and really funny. Right. We used to laugh. Right, right. He used to make me laugh so much. And he was again. He was um, doing this documentary on me. Right. So I got quite close to him because he was yeah. with me every day. Every day, yeah, well, you would. filming me, filming me when I nearly got squash coming out of a department store because the crowd had grown. Right. Oh God, it was so frightening. And did we were. Have, sorry, did you have minders or? I did. I had a bodyguard, right. which right. I said when they got a bodyguard yeah. for me. Yeah. I said I don't need a bodyguard. I can't be. That's going to hurt me. And they said no, just in case, because sometimes if we get in a crowd situation, we yeah. might. And they got me this. Gorgeous bodyguard called Harold Paul. He was an right. ex Mr. Universe. Oh, really? <laughs> and his arm, yeah. we measured it, his arm was the same measurement as my waist. <laughs> Crikey. Well, and he was so lovely. He was really sh He had a slight lisp. Yeah. So he was very self conscious. Yeah. I think he was from Puerto Rico originally. He was such a sweet man. Thank God we had Harold because that day we came out of the department store yeah. to do. Um, a shot for um, another photographer, Melvin um, Sikorsky, yeah. which we we'll get to it, later. Yeah. Bert was filming me, yeah. and I was meant to be coming out. I was also doing a fashion shoot. I mean, it's so complicated, but Bert was filming the fashion shoot, and I was right. going to come out of the department store with yeah. shopping bags, yeah. Twiggy shopping in New York. Yeah. And, but a crowd had grown because they saw the cameras, they saw. So yeah. a crowd brings a crowd. Yeah. So by the time it was ready for me to go down, this huge crowd on <laughs> Fifth Avenue had grown. So Bert came in to me and he said, look, <clears throat> no, actually Melvin came in and said, Bert's at the end of the pavement, right. your limo's there, yeah. the crowd's got a bit big, just come to the door, walk very slowly, I'll get 10 shots, get in the car, you're out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Fine, no problem. So now I'm in my little mini skirt, so we come. and. As we come down in the lift in the department store, the crowd's on the ground floor as well. And Bert's got all this on film. It terrifies yeah. me every time I see it. It's so frightening. And you can see people, you know, yeah. start grabbing me. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I'm going like this. And Harold's right next to me. So I think, I'm all right. I've got just Harold. Just to stop you, you could, oh, you've got Harold at the... Yeah, right, he's right. coming through with yeah. me. And, and Melvin said, just go with Twigs. Don't leave so her. So you've got Bert Stern. And Harold's got my face, Melvin. which is hysterical, because we had, it was the mask pictures. Right, I right. probably should have saved this story till the next bit. So I get to the swing doors and there's yeah. two policemen because they've got the police by now yeah. to control the crowd. And I hear one policeman say to the other, we're never going to hold them back, Joel. And I start to scream. Yeah. I can't go back. I think I shout, scream, mum. <laughs> I want my mum or something. And, and that's the last shot Bert got of me on the camera because the camera was behind me. Yeah. Or the cameraman. Yeah. It was knocked out of his arm. Crikey. So they freeze framed on me screaming. Right. I got pushed through the swing doors. Yeah. I mean, I, I could have not been here. No, but it sounds like I it. I could have got squashed. And they pushed me through. Harold just picked me up yeah. like a baggage under <laughs> his arm. So I was yeah. so little. And the gangway was disappearing and he ran through it. The limo driver, thank God, had the thought to open the window and he yeah. pushed me through the window. Oh, really? And I laid on the limo floor, hysterical, yeah. and all my eyelashes were on my chin. 
Cracking. And they were jumping on the car. It was, you know, a crowd. So it's frenzy. It wasn't particularly because it was me. It was just a crowd. Well, it must have been to some degree because uh, it was some you. Some degree, but people at the back couldn't see. Right, right. You know, they knew there was something yeah. very, very exciting going on. Oh. Terrifying. Because that I'm, was the day I nearly got squashed in New York. <laughs> I did. Um, I did a thing with Lady Gaga. Oh gosh, yeah. And um, we did. A, we put a body camera on her. Uh huh. And then got her to do what you just described. It doesn't sound quite as friendly as you described it. We got to do. It. But then it's more paparazzi. Yeah. This was. This was pre. This is pre paparazzi. Pre -paparazzi. This is just people. Yeah. Who wanted to see what was going on? And yeah. they wasn't aggressive. They didn't want to hurt me. No. Because actually, at the moment, Harold got me to the car and threw me through, because I talked to him afterwards. He said there was an older lady with her handbag hitting him, saying, I want her autograph, I want her autograph. Crikey. Bashing him. Public property. With her, <laughs> her um, handbag. <laughs> so I'll try and swing back the picture. <laughs> so here we're Bert's dad. So sessions with Bert, as opposed to sessions with Dick, were different in what way? Yeah, it was much lighter, much funnier. Right. I mean, that's quite a serious picture. But actually, in the middle of this shoot, um, yeah. actually, I, I, this wasn't New York. This was Paris. All oh, right, okay. That, so it was pre my going to America. This was because I worked with Bert in 1966, and I think right. I may have got my date wrong, but I think right. this was Paris. I tell you why because. In the middle of this shoot, which was three or four days, yeah. I went off to a garden party with yeah. Bert and all the team, yeah. um, a lunch garden party, and I was playing with the lady who threw it's dog in the garden, yeah. and I was running with the dog and I twisted my ankle. Oh, really? And I couldn't walk properly. <laughs> mm. Bert said, oh, my God. So they, they, so sitting strap, down. they strapped my leg up. No, I had, I had bandages and plaster up to about there. So some oh, really? of the photos yeah. you'll see in, in the... That one, I must have been all right. That you, you, you cut... They cut that leg right. off. Because <laughs> I'm all strapped up. And Bert said, don't you ever go out playing with a dog in the garden again. I said, oh, God, I didn't know I was going to fall over. Just get yourself thrown you know, I was a kid. I windows. was 16 and a half. Yeah, yeah, no, sure. So I, there was I, part I, of me that was... Yeah, wanting to live. Yeah, I was just a yeah. kid. It was like... Yeah. There was a puppy, and I went out and played with the puppy. <laughs> Sprayed my ankle. And so, how many shoots do you think you did with, with Bert Stern? How many? Yeah, just is it like... Oh, gosh. 100 or 10 or...? No, not that many. Probably right. 10. Right, OK. Yeah. And they were all several days and long. And this documentary. Right. All right. Which I've got copies of, which is quite extraordinary to watch, actually, because that was all oh, on I'm it, sure. that nearly being killed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, oh. and that's... The um, interview with Woody Allen. Is on that documentary too? Mm. Right, OK. Right, some exciting viewing for me. Um, and same sort of thing with the teams, Aberdeen's team, similar to Bert Stern's team, was a very different thing. Uh, what, his team? Well, yeah, people have the hairdresser and makeup artists. I, mean, I guess you well, had hairdressers no. and makeup artists. We had hairdressers, days, I did my makeup. Still doing your own makeup? Yeah. Right, so when did that change? I think the first makeup artist I worked for was probably in the late. 60s, early 70s, and it was Barbara Daly in London. Oh, really? Right. But again, uh, I kind of would take care of my eyes, yeah. and, and she'd work with me. Yeah. Unless, oh, actually, there is an Avedon photograph with a flower. Yeah, yeah. Cover of Vogue, no? Yeah. yeah. And a kind of flower fur. I wouldn't wear fur now, but we did then. Yeah. Fur jacket with a flower, yeah. and that must have been a makeup artist, but I couldn't right. tell you. I remember Ara Gallant very well because he always did my hair. Yeah, I can't remember who the makeup artist. So if it was a specialised makeup, they did have people. Yeah, but if it was just me modelling as me. Yeah, I didn't. and did you, you had stylists that take it around you, putting a dress on? And... Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, fashion. We called them fashion editresses, not stylists. Right. Okay. And there was, it was a lovely lady called Polly Mellon, who, I again, know, I loved. I know Do you know Polly? I don't know her. She's I'm quite sorry. famous, know, actually. Yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I loved her. Yeah. And they were all much... You know, I was this kid. Yeah. They were all so much older. I mean, Polly was probably in her late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. So they all looked after me. Yeah. 